All right, this is the advanced Topo mini workflow. And this is using a lot of the same stuff that the basic workflow uses, but it adds in the addition of other features like walls and stairs and um, uh, curbs, I believe, and even paths. Yep, and paths. So. The cool thing is you can use any of your own geometry to, to work with in this. This is just example geometry. But we start with the basic inputs um, of this geo set. So we have spots that we can move up and down. And we, we want to hit refresh from this side panel, um, the side grasshopper panel. And then we can undo that and refresh again we can um you know move things like a break line refresh that we can also delete things and refresh or we can add things so if i add another curve and refresh now i have two curves right um so that that's um spots and break lines Contours are very similar to break lines, but typically I put anything that's at a particular elevation um, on that contour layer and anything that kind of acts like a contour. Now, the other cool thing is other geo. And you can select multiple points to create a very custom surface. And if we hit refresh, um, now we have topography that you know acts like a mesh all the way up to this point, and then it starts acting like the surface that we we have input. And and you can do all kinds of things with this surface now. Like you can still rotate it, um, and do all kinds of cool things. I'm just going to go back. All right. So the other thing we can do is create features. And features are created using different inputs. So the simplest input right now is the stair input. And this is actually hiding for some reason. And that's because I the name is wrong. Let me fix that. I'll do a video on how most of these things work as well. If, if you haven't watched that, hopefully that's available to you now. Um, so, so this is the stairs and it lets you build a set of stairs to, you know, as a part of a model, but it also creates inputs for the topography. So if we, if we took this surface and we moved this down here for some reason, it literally just changed the topography as well. And it looks like we had an additional curve that we don't need. I'm going to delete that. And then, um, so that's stairs. And stairs allow you to build, you know, stairs like that. You can also do stairs like this. And I'm on, I'm on the on the path layer so it's drawing paths so i want to be on the the stairs layer Oops. so if i take and i draw the top curve and the bottom curve of my stair and then i loft between now i have a surface that describes my stairs. And this 2.0, I think I need to fix something here, but the overall idea is that it, it, it creates stairs and creates the grading geometry around that to be able to update your topography as well. So that's, that's just as important as the rendering of the stairs themselves. And like there's actually some changes that need to happen there. Um, so, the other thing is paths. So path is created using a center line. So I have here, I have a, a curve. If I go in plan, doing control tab, 
I have this curve that describes a path. And then I also have a point on my path layer that describes the beginning of that curve or that path. So if I were to select them both and do alt and drag to create another one, it would create another path over here. And it does this by finding the nearest point um, to the beginning of the curve. So if I move this down, it will recognize that that's near that particular path. And that also has, it looks like we need to expose the slope of the path. So we're gonna publish that to the remote panel and edit, we'll move that up here. And then and these, these uh, after you watch these videos, you may find that some of these things have changed just a tiny bit. We're, we're always trying to improve them and um, hopefully they're just, things are just easier to understand. Now, if, you know, so we have paths and again, when, when I, if I bake the topo features, this is gonna bake the path surfaces, the wall surfaces and the steps, I'll just undo. Um, it also, you can also bake the mesh and these things are influencing the mesh, obviously. The last thing to really understand, and this is probably the more comp most complicated thing, and they're really not complicated, but, but sort of in relation to all these other things, the most complicated, which is the um, wall and curb tools. So the wall and curb tools take different inputs. So you can see here, I, I draw on my walls layer, I have eight points and two curves. There, the two curves describe the front and the back of the wall that I'm, I'm describing. And then the, um, the points describe the front top and the bottom, or sorry, the top back and the front bottom of the wall. So if I took if I took this point and moved it up, it's going to shift where that uh, wall and usually these walls are retaining walls, and it it shifts where the wall actually is is um, defining the grade, right? So maybe we don't need a wall that's quite as steep, or maybe we maybe we just go back. Now. Um, that's walls and curbs work in a very similar way. So if I have um, a curb that's changing height, I can describe that by moving the, the points up and down here. And it interpolates from here all the way over to wherever the next point is. In this case, I think it's, I think it's the beginning and end of the whole curb. So that's a little crazy um, and that you'd never do that. Um, let's really not try to build walls like that. Um, but yeah, so I think that's it. Boundaries is interesting. I think boundaries should, if it's just, if I just draw a rectangle here on the boundary layer and refresh, it will only include points from geometries from inside of that boundary. And, um, that's, that's kind of key for understanding boundaries. So if you were sort of working on an area of your site and wanted to really focus and say, okay, what's happening here in this little area, you could do that, right? You could just, you could just really focus on one, oops, one area or actually refresh you could work on two areas. Refresh. And it, it now it includes the geometry from both areas, but it's not, it, it's, it is combining everything into one mesh currently. So yeah, that's boundaries and you don't need to have boundaries, but it, with this uh, tool, but it helps sometimes to really focus your processing, especially if you have a very large site.
and you're trying to create something. Um, yeah. 